a clear day, the Channel Islands are easily viewed from Santa Barbara. 157 years ago, a Native American woman was rescued from San Nicolas Island, which is the most remote of all Channel Islands. The woman had been left to live alone 18 years before. Scott O'Dell wrote a fictionalized version of her story in Island of the Blue Dolphins. On a recent visit to Santa Barbara, I went searching for the real woman and her true story. After her rescue from the island, the woman was brought to Santa Barbara Mission. We know her as Corona, but the missionaries gave her the Christian name Juana Maria. At the Natural History Museum, a glimpse is given as to who she possibly might have been. The local Chumash did not speak her language, but she taught them a song, Toki Toki. Here we listen to a recording made in 1913. A translation is, I live on this island contented because I see the day when I get out of this island. Well, not a Chumash herself, the exhibit shows what her life may have been like. There is a display dedicated to Juan Maria. George and Sinferosa Nidiver rescued and cared for her during her brief time in Santa Barbara. While her skirt and basket were lost or destroyed, these two artifacts belonging to her were donated to the museum in 2005. They are a fish hook and arrow point. One can just imagine Karana using them to hunt on the island. This photograph, taken many years after the rescue, shows her actual whalebone hunt on San Nicolas Island. Sadly, Juana Maria only survived seven weeks after her rescue. She became ill from dysentery and passed away at the Santa Barbara Mission. The mission was constructed between 1786 and 1821. It was the hub of local culture in Santa Barbara in the 19th century. Known as the Queen of Missions, it is a most beautiful place. Here is where the lone woman is buried. Many important Californians are buried in this ancient cemetery. The woman whose true name will never be known lies next to the famous old Californian names like Ortego, Carrillo, and De La Ortega. When she died, it was not common to mark graves, so her exact resting spot is unknown. In 1925, the Daughters of the American Revolution founded a plaque to be mounted in her memory on a far cemetery wall. Juana Maria's time in Santa Barbara was very short, but her story and spirit still impact on many people today. May she rest in peace. Well, now it's 2.30. Time to go. I hope you enjoyed my little show. Bye!